from starring in the hit noughties TV series Footballers' Wives to appearing in soaps like Hollyoaks, award-winning actress Fina Aruche's two-decade-long career of taking on other people's identities is at the heart of a new one-woman show she's bringing to the capital this week. I'm very pleased to say ahead of that, Fina joins London Live News. Lovely to have you with us. Hello, hello, hello. Is Liberty Baker from Footballers' Wives the, the, car, the role that you're still most remembered for? I think so, which is really strange because she's so far from who I actually am. The only thing I had in common with Liberty was the fact that I have modelled, but that was it. But I don't know, I just, I think negative, strong, feisty women are soap, soap gold, and so I think that's what she did for me. That you know? was a real hit series back in 2006, <laughs> I think yes. it ended, so 10 years ago. 10 yeah. years? All right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Thank you, Raya. But it's still <laughs> one of those shows that you mention to people and they straight away remember, isn't it? It is. That's, and that is great. But you know what? One of the reasons why I wrote this play, there's many reasons why I wrote this play, but one of them is because I have a very rich imagination. I have a rich heritage. I'm a Nigerian scouser that went to school in California. I'm a mother. You know, I'm a lover. I'm a fighter. I've got all these things going on. So it's good to be able to step away from what other people have made, have written for me and write something for myself. Do yeah, you know that I'm playing... Talk, talking of which... Yes. You've pulled together a whole range of different characters <laughs> for this show. I think I'm right in saying nine different characters. Nine characters. I'm playing Arasta. I'm playing a medium mogul. I'm playing a woman in the middle of a sort of marriage meltdown. I'm playing a little kid. Um, all of these people are having an identity crisis. I myself had something of a crisis a couple of years back because my young niece passed away in my home and um, I was stalked by uh, somebody from one of those far-right groups who I won't give airtime to and um, all of that led me to sort of have a mentally difficult time like my mental health suffered I was very challenged and you either get bitter right or you get better and I decided, not straight away, I think I got bitter. <laughs> I did the bitter of I did that first, <laughs> but that causes more problems than it solves. So this is a way, my way of claiming back my narrative, my strength, the things that I enjoy. Um, I lived with a very dark depression type spirit for a couple of years and it's not healthy. So I'm, I'm celebrating, I'm like, I'm flowering. And well, talking of that celebration, how yeah. much is this a show about celebrating as opposed to kind of picking apart yes. how difficult it can be as an actor to have yes. to constantly play different roles? Yes, it's not about, it's not about picking apart anything. It's the opposite. It's about the joy of being able to drive yourself forward and like you said, celebrate. It's, it's just, it's a gift. I mean, haven't we heard a lot about there's not enough roles for women of a certain age, there's not enough roles if you're brown, brown. people are leaving the country, people are doing this, people are doing that, and I'm going, you know what? Give it to a scouser. Look, I'll write it myself, I'll star in it, I'll drag the bags from Liverpool, and that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> Just like one-man band, one-man show going all the way to Edinburgh to do this thing. And so. I understand that the show is as a result of your... Is it your master's? You went back yeah, to university? Yeah, I went, well, during the, you know, when life gives you lemons, and I fell apart a, a lot, I had a time when I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I felt really quite low, so I went back to university. And at first I was looking at black representation in the media. Now, it was a little depressing, to be honest. <laughs> you know, it was a little bit like, uh, and I thought, I can't. I just, I can't read about other people not getting what they want and a legacy of having to live somewhere else. I lived in the States already for 15 years. I'm a mother of a beautiful eight-year-old boy, so I don't want to live somewhere else. I want to forge my path here for the most part. And so I was started, I was challenged by Roger Shannon, name check, to write um, a play about my discoveries, my research. I did a lot of research in the television industries and the broadcasting industries. And, um, you know, once I'd written the script, he's so crafty. How am I, how am I not going to act it? <laughs> so he said, you know, you just, just pick one day and do it once. And here I am, off to Edinburgh. So it's Bill Hopkinson's and Roger Shannon's fault, fault from Edgehill University. Well, they're who we have to thank, that sounds like. Yeah. Lovely to have you in the nice studio. To thank have you so to much for here. joining us. And if you'd like to check out Identity Crisis, it's on at the uh, Covent Garden Tristan Bates Theatre this Monday, the 13th of June.